Okay. So hello everybody again. My name is Ashley Johns and I am a graduate assistant with the FSU Career Center. I work with the experiential learning team with a focus on the internship fund, intern FSU, and student employee of the year ceremony. And so today what we're going to get to talk about is the internship fund. This is our info session um, to discuss all things internship fund and hopefully inform you all about um, how to apply and how to become recipients. And so uh, another person that I just want to uh, point out is here uh, is Kyra Duffy. She's the person who has been reaching out to each and every one of you. And so Kyra, if you just want to introduce yourself very quickly. Yes. Hi, everyone. So I am the uh, career liaison for care and first generation students. Um, I'm one of the assistant directors on the career advising and counseling team. But yes, that's mainly me who you've been in communication from um, for this info session probably really anything um, that's of course can be care related. So mm -hmm. happy to be here and I you know Ash is gonna do a fantastic job in giving all this info session. Thank you so much, Kyra. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So the internship fund. So the goal of the internship fund is to reduce financial barriers for students um, who want to pursue any type of experiential learning opportunity. Um, experiential learning opportunity. So we talk about internships, but experiential learning opportunities are not just internships. They're things like apprenticeships, and we'll talk about what those are a little bit later. But what the internship fund does is supply you with some funds so that you are able to um, experience these different learning opportunities. And so uh, we do any single semester paid or unpaid uh, career related formalized experiential learning opportunities. And just so you know, that's not just this semester, we do it every semester. So if you're interested, maybe you decide you don't wanna do an internship this semester, this coming semester for spring 2021, maybe you wanna do something fall 2021, guess what? We have that opportunity for you in fall as well. Um, so just keep an eye out for any uh, announcements in terms of funding cycles. But right now we'll talk about it uh, specifically for spring 2021. And so some of you may be asking, what are experiential learning opportunities? So we talk about the big I, which is internships. However, there are a lot of different experiential learning opportunities that students could uh, engage with and be a part of. Um, a great example for me when I was in my undergrad, I had an apprenticeship um, with a local nonprofit. And so it's important to know these kinds of buzzwords when you're looking at experiential learning opportunities to know what would work and fit to be um, applicable for the internship fund. And so there's an extensive list right here, um, internships, research, fellowships, uh, sustained creative work, field work, scholarly work, practicum, service learning, student teaching, apprenticeships, significant volunteer work, uh, co-ops, development leadership programs, uh, clinicals. There's a lot of different things. As long as you can provide us with um, an idea of, oh, I go to this place, you know, 20 hours a week and I'm learning these career development skills, more than likely we'll be able to consider you for the internship fund. And so some examples of some past places recipients have interned, um, some big ones, uh, Procter Gamble, um, IBM, um, there's been local nonprofits, the Children's Campaign, um, One More Child, um, and then there's been some, you know, in-betweens. So when we talk about PepsiCo, um, they have different branches of uh, on nonprofits underneath them as well. Um, there's been global experiences, so uh, Safari for You. Uh, really, it's a wide range of different opportunities that you can have. And so the next part is talking about eligibility. So students who are eligible uh, need to be currently enrolled degree-seeking students. And it doesn't matter if you're undergraduate or graduate. Uh, you just have to be enrolled in degree seeking. Um, unfortunately, um, alumni are students in their final semester. So if you're currently a uh, senior and this is your last semester, so fall 2020 is your last semester, you cannot be, you are not eligible for spring 2021. 
um, for funding. Uh, transient non-degree seeking students are also not eligible for uh, the experiential learning opportunity funding. And then for uh, international students who are uh, able to work through F1 visas, um, it, as long as you are able to comply with FSU's guidelines, um, specifically for curricular practical training, um, you'll be able to be eligible. And some of the other eligibility requirements, uh, you have to be in good academic standing, um, you have to have no active student conduct sanctions, you have to meet the university experiential learning guidelines, uh, you have to be pursuing a degree at FSU. And then two of the main ones, um, funding applications need to be submitted the semester prior to beginning your experiential learning opportunity. So our due date, you'll learn um, the end date for our application is November 8th. Um, and so that would be the date that you have to submit your application by. And in order to be eligible for the internship fund, you'll have to either have already received an internship offer or be a finalist in the interview process. And we'll go into that a little bit later. So the application process. So we have a really interesting uh, application process. You actually do it through the FS4U portal. And so what you'll go to um, this link and I'll pull it up just so you all can see it. Uh, Kyra, can you see my screen? Yes, and you can see, can you see that I pulled up a link? No, I cannot see you pulled up a link, but I can okay. see your screen. Okay, let me share the link very quickly. Can you see it now? So you'll go to fsu.academicworks.com and it'll bring you to FS4U. Um, and this is the internship fund. Um, but if you're going in, you'll sign in and then um, you'll go and search internship fund and it should just pop up. So we're gonna go back to sharing our PowerPoint. And so uh, you'll get to select from three different funding levels. There's a $250 funding level, a $500 funding level, and a $1,000 funding level. Um, it is really important to note that the committee who uh, selects recipients do reserve the right to fund you at a lower level, and we'll talk about that as well. Um, the spring 2021 application, as I mentioned earlier, we're open now. All applications are open now. Um, and you have until November 8th, 2020 at 11.59 p.m. to submit. So just an overview of the application. So part of your online application, you'll have to provide a copy of your official offer letter. Um, from this internship or experiential learning opportunity employer or proof of the interview process. So again, as we talked about earlier, if you're in the some internship opportunities um, will have a specific process that they go through rounds of in interviewing. And so if you're in the final stages of interviewing, um, you can submit proof that you are in the process of interviewing for this um, internship. Um, you just have to submit that when you apply. And then also follow up and let us know if you received the internship or if you were offered the internship um, or where you are in that process. So you'll have to include the following details. You'll need to include a company name, um, what your job title is, the graph geographic location so students can go to California and be able to um, receive this funding. You just have to be a, a degree seeking enrolled student. Um, and then the start date and the end date of your internship. Those are really important. You'll have to uh, disclose that in your application. Contact information. Um, so in addition to what I just discussed, you'll also have to provide the contact information for the hiring employee uh, employer. Um, so that'll be the full contact name, their work phone number, and then their work email. And then there are three short response questions that we'll talk about. So these are the essay questions that are on the um, 
application. So the first one asks uh, how this specific internship or experiential learning opportunity aligns with your post-graduation plans. Um, I feel that question is a little self-explanatory. However, um, the important part of experiential learning opportunities is you are growing in your career development. And so when the committee is reading, they really want to see why they should put their money into your experiential learning growth. And so by explaining to them, hey, I want to do this, this uh, experiential learning opportunity because I think it would be really great for me to get gain experience in, let's say, um, informational writing or technical writing, and then explaining why you'll need that later on after you graduate from college. That's going to be really important when committee members are reviewing applications. And then the second question um, talks about funding needs and how you'll use the funds. So one thing I know it is, it can be difficult for students to talk about, you know, why they need funding. Um, as a student and undergrad who was low uh, socioeconomic status, it was difficult for me as well. However, um, it's really important when you're applying for this fund to talk about what you'll be using the funds for because they just they want to know why you need the funding. And so some things that you can talk about transportation, professional clothing, lost wages, um, housing. Um, and it's really important uh, to include a budget breakdown. So I'm allocating this much money for professional clothing. I'm allocating this much money for gas. And so making sure that you are giving a very detailed description of what the funding is going to go to will really help the committee be able to select a recipient. And then anything else you'd like the funding uh, selection committee to know. This can be anything from um, personal experiences. Um, maybe you just want to tell them thank you for even considering you. That's also an option. Um, just anything else you'd like to tell them that would be important for them to know uh, when considering your application. So these are the criteria that we look at uh, when we're talking about um, selecting uh, students to receive funds. Um, the first thing is quality and completeness of the application. Uh, this is not to say that you won't receive funding if you don't put, you know, more than three sentences for a question. That's not what that's saying. Uh, that's basically saying, are you explaining why you need the funding or why you're applying well? And did you complete the application? Um, part, the second part of the criteria would be clear learning objectives, including their potential plan on how to achieve them. So we ask for three minimum, three uh, learning objectives at minimum. And this is just explaining, hi, this is what I will be learning in this position. And this is why I need this uh, internship or experiential learning opportunity. Um, it is going to be helpful for the committee for them, again, to see why you need this opportunity. Funding need. Um, I explained this a little bit earlier, but um, I'll give another example. Um, some students who have full-time jobs or part-time jobs can't afford to do unpaid experiential learning opportunities or even sometimes paid opportunities because they're, they need to be able to be funded in order to, you know, go through life. Um, I was one of those students who I worked two internships at a time. I had a part-time job. And so being able to kind of express this like need for funds is really important. Um, and being able to express why uh, it would be really important for you to be a recipient of this funding um, is going to help you exponentially um, when uh, the committee reviews applications. Four, accurate and realistic presentation of budget. Uh, we kind of, we already went over that, so I'm not necessarily going to give like full detail. Just make sure that you are giving 
reasons and also supplying an idea of how much money is going to be allocated for what. And then post-graduation or career impact statement. Um, just talking about what you're going to do after college and why this experiential learning opportunity is so important. When I talk about, you know, criteria, all I think about is being authentic. And so if you're being your authentic self in your application, you can't do anything more. If you're being honest and open and detailed, it's going to go a really long way for a committee. So our timeline. So our application cycle opened on October 1st, so it's been out for a little while now. And then the cycle will close on November 8th. And then recipients will be notified by December 9th. And so what that, that looks like is by uh, the 8th, the application will close and the committee will start meeting um, in between then and that next week. And then we'll start uh, selecting recipients. And then any additional funding opportunities, uh, we want to add that in there uh, just so students get an idea of what kind of financial aid is out there or financial help is out there for them. Um, so some of those things uh, can fall under scholarships in the financial aid office, um, the career center or the center for leadership and social change, the molership program, um, the alumni association has alumni ambassador awards. And your colleges also, some of the colleges have opportunities for students. And so really understanding um, where you can find funding is going to help. And then the Career Center. So um, we have a plethora of resources for every kind of student. Every part of the job application process, we have a resource guide for it. And I mean that entirely. Um, any part, you know, any part of, you know, graduate school applications, we have a resource guide for that. And so um, it's really important uh, to talk about those things and to be able to show y'all, hey, we have these resources. They're really great and they're really amazing opportunities. Um, and then in addition, career advising is really going to go a long way for you um, as a student. Um, if you choose to do it. Um, as a career advisor, um, it's really important for students who are interested in resume critiques, in personal statements. If you're struggling with, hi, I don't know how to choose a major. I don't know what major I would fit in or what I want to do. Um, career advising is really going to help. And we're virtual right now. So those hours are Monday to Friday, 9 to 4.30. Um, with an exception of Tuesday that goes from goes till eight on Tuesday and then on Friday we have a meeting 1 30 to 2 30 so virtual career or virtual career advising is closed for that time um, but we have a lot of resources at career.fsu.edu slash info now if you have any questions about um, the internship fund or intern FSU um, feel free to reach out to either me um, or uh, Lee Pond. She's the Senior Assistant Director for Experiential Learning, or she's one of the Senior Assistant Directors for Experiential Learning. And her focus is also Intern FSU, the Internship Fund, and then Student Employee of the Year. And then if, uh, hopefully, if we go back on campus next semester, um, this is where you can find us, Dunlap Success Center. Um, if y'all have ever heard of the Center for Leadership and, to and Social Change, we're right across the hall. Um, and then I'm sure most of you know the Health and Wellness Center right across the way from there as well. Um, but if we aren't, you can always find us at career.fsc.edu. Now, do y'all have any questions? Let me stop recording very fast. Um,